I've gone ahead and temporarily mounted the mufflers on the engine so we can take a look at a few basic measurements so we can begin to cut our cowl. The nice thing about the PT-72 is that this is going to fit very cleanly in our cowl with only holes needed for the exhaust and of course for air exit. Uh, to figure out where to drill the holes for the exhaust, these are going to come straight down. So if we measure from the, the firewall to the center of this tube, uh, this one is 20 two and a half centimeters, about 225 millimeters, and this one is about 205 millimeters. And then the spacing from the center line, which the carb is usually right on the center line, is about 73 millimeters to the center of the hole here and about 73 here. I'll show you this in a diagram. Okay, so this line here indicates our firewall on the plane. Uh, this line behind it indicates how far the cow overlaps when it's put on. So after being, being put on, the cowl overlaps an additional 10 millimeters from the firewall itself. Uh, our measurements to this pipe was 205 millimeters, and to this pipe 225. They're both, if this marks the center line, this is not to scale, but if this marks the center line, then they're gonna be 73 millimeters away from the center line. We gotta add that 10 millimeters to each of these measurements so it's going to be 235 millimeters to the center of the hole from the edge of the cowl and 215 millimeters to the center line from the edge of the cowl here. So it's really important you have a clear understanding of where you're going to begin drilling and cutting your cowl before you start. Uh, another thing that I like to do is just drill a few small holes, then kind of put the cowl on and peek in there and see if it, it looks like it's lining up about right. I used some tape to mark the center line of the cowl and uh, put a couple of measurements, the 235 uh, and the, the 215 marked off here, and then I measured 73 millimeters away from center line here and 73 millimeters away from center line here. Uh, I put some holes in there big enough to kind of see in a little bit, um, but not big enough that it would be devastating if the, the holes were significantly off. So after putting it up the first time, I realized that both holes were too far back. What happened is when I was uh, illustrating the, the diagram, I indicated that we'd have to add another 10 millimeters because of the back. But actually what happens is the cow drops back. And so we're going to have to shorten that measurement by 10 millimeters. So I took the original measurement, moved it up 10 millimeters to go back to neutral and then 10 more to center it over the hole. So this is kind of a learning experience here, and again, why it's important to start with a small hole. And what I was able to do is, um, upon second examination of these holes, it was enough to look in there with a flashlight, shining it through the cowl in the front, and I could see the openings. Um, on this one, you can see that I moved my mark over to the right a little bit, because whenever uh, I looked in to see the exhaust opening, I had to bring my eye up this way, so I knew that it was actually over this way more, uh, if that makes sense. If, if it had been straight on, then I would have known it was straight on. If I was looking this way to find it, if I had to move my eye down here, then I would know that it was this way and the circle would have to come over this way more. So I just used a, a little circle diagram. I, I kind of hand filled in with pencil so you could see it, hopefully. Uh, but you can see it turns out that it's not really a, a bad thing. It's not a horrible thing that these holes are there. Uh, this one's going to be pretty much encompassed. This one's really close. So again, not devastating. And another um, illustration why it's really important to make sure you, you just take your time, measure carefully, and don't jump into any cuts on this thing because if you do a small cut, uh, it won't be the end of the world. You can mask that pretty easily. So while we're on the steps of cutting the cowl, uh, we'll go ahead and cut the opening on the bottom for the air exit. The rule of thumb is that you want twice to three times as much air coming out of the cowl as you have coming in. So coming into the cow, we have these two openings here. They're both about two inches by one inches. So looking at a quick diagram I made here, you can see that if you got two by one, those are each two square inches. We have a total of four square inches coming into the cow. We need eight to 12 square inches coming out. So a three by four opening will give us exactly 12 inches. I've used tape once again to kind of mark a, an imaginary center line here and then marked off a 3x4 area that we're going to cut out. Uh, the way I'm going to cut this out, I'm just going to use a Dremel tool, a cutting tool, and cut a thin line around all of this at first, and I'll explain why in a second. 
And while I'm cutting, I'll go ahead and cut out the, um, the holes for the exhaust as well. So here's, here's the cowl cut uh, for the most part. We'll use a sanding bit with the Dremel to kind of round these out. It looks like I was a little bit ahead, so I'm going to elongate these this way. But it's not a big deal because the, um, they're going to need to be big enough that we can get the tubes on and off. And to do that, you'll actually end up using um, a needle nose to kind of put them on and then clamp them on. So these are going to enlarge anyway, so I'll just kind of draw them back a little bit more. So that's why you just take little steps at a time. Now as far as what we did here, um, I kind of cut out a little flap and I'm going to use a heat gun to heat this up and bend it and then let it cool. So we basically create a kind of a fairing or scoop. And what that will do is when we go to um, baffle our cowl, it's going to create a low pressure situation at the bottom here. So the air coming out of here will exit rather than the, the air coming over the cowl pushing it back in. So this kind of blocks it, deflects it, creates a low pressure so the air can just spill out. All right, guys, here's a image of the semi-finished scoop. I used a little bit of balsa on the sides and reinforce it on the bottom where it meets the, uh, the cowl, if you can kind of see in there, to help form that scoop shape. And I'll just go ahead and cover that with a little bit of black covering. You could have painted it prior to doing this, but uh, either way will be sufficient. It features a 40-inch wingspan and an airfoil wing for a superior outdoor performance in light to moderate wind. The electronics package is plenty of...